Kims. Welcome, everybody, to our August webinar, OCR Tips, Better Scans, Batch Scanning, File Types, and more. Our presenters today will be Paul Stevenson, who's our National Accounts Manager, and Damian uh, Pickering, who is one of our Territory Sales Managers. Uh, a little bit about him, who we are, quickly. We're hoping that the, the webinar will be more informational and less infomercial, but of course, uh, HIMSS makes products for uh, people who are blind or have visual impairment. So we're going to cover the OCR, both from uh, uh, tips and tricks, which are device neutral, and also tips and tricks that are specific to certain HIMSS devices. Um, if you're less familiar with HIMSS, we are a U.S.-based company. We are in Austin, Texas. All of our support and repairs are done in Austin, Texas, which means if your device uh, should should meet a, a, a bad circumstance, because things happen, especially students in schools, um, if you send your device to us for repair, it's going to come back to you pretty darn quick. Um, and we, we like to pride ourselves on having pretty unique product features, and uh, not only are we AT users ourselves, we, most of our employees are assistive technology users, um, but we also, one of the other things we think we do pretty well is, is take advice from our customers. So if there's anything on your device and you think one day, oh, gee, I wish I could do this, or I, I wish my device could do that, let us know. Most of the best features, the newest, latest, and greatest features from our product come from your advice, from your feedback. So some of the things we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about basic OCR tips that work with any device, some OCR tips for handheld OCR products, like our Blaze, which is um, about the size of your cell phone, which is pretty cool, um, OCR tips specifically for blind users, pairing OCR with your refreshable Braille display, which is also pretty cool, OCR tips for HIMSS low vision products, batch scanning with our eBot Pro, uh, and then of course we'll open it up for questions and answers. Um, so Paul, are you there with us? I'm back. Okay, do you want to cover some of the OCR basics? Uh, absolutely. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the eBot, it's our fully transportable unit. It only weighs uh, anywhere from six to eight pounds depending on the unit. And it comes with a backpack, and um, that's all I'm going to do on the sales part of it. Uh, what I really want to point out is that uh, our eBot Advanced and the eBot Pro models both have OCR capability. The OCR, I mean, the eBot Advanced has screen capture OCR only, and the eBot is just a viewer by itself. You have to bring in a monitor, and that could be a tablet, iPad, smart pad, a phone. Uh, a laptop or any type of monitor. Um, but with that, whatever you can see on the screen on the eBot Advance, you, you click on the uh, OCR button and it's going to process that information and read that back to you. On the OCR, on the eBot Pro, uh, we have two capabilities with the OCR and that's basically a screen capture OCR just like on the Advance or you have a full page OCR. And um, uh, along with the full page OCR, we have sketch, uh, batch scanning OCR. And I think we covered that on a different slide. I might be ahead of myself here a little bit. Um, but when you're using the eBot and you're looking to uh, capture the best OCR possible, uh, you want to avoid well-lit areas where you have a lot of uh, lights in the room, uh, you want to dim those down. Uh, the eBot actually has a uh, on and off switch for the light uh, on its camera, so you can turn that off. Uh, you want to avoid shadows uh, that are on there. Um, you, you want to be able to place your, your paper directly on the stand. Uh, that's the best place to put it. It's a guide for the paper placement and uh, will give you proper OCR um, alignment. Um, I've, I'm, I'm not too sure uh, what else I can really say about the eBot and OCR basics, uh, other than it's very simple to do. 
and um, is very highly accurate when it uh, reads back to you. I could I could jump in and add a, a, a little bit. Um, okay. Do you have me, Michelle? I do. Yeah. So this is this is Damian Pickering. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. So I, I as a totally blind person myself, um, you know, it, it's people talk about you know that lighting is a variable, um, you know, and and the lighting in your environment does make a big difference, and especially when we're dealing with portable devices, pretty much all the things we're talking about here today are things that you're, you know, you're not necessarily just going to set up in one optimal location. You're going to be moving them around so that the, the lighting is something that if you are totally blind, um, you, you just may not always know exactly what the situation um, you're in might be. So that's where just knowing how to, to turn the flash on and off if your device does have lighting. So like Paul mentioned, um, there is a, a switch on our eBot, and if you have voice guidance turned on, it'll say, you know, light on, light off. Similarly with the Blaze product that I'll talk about in a little bit, there is a, a flash that you can turn on and off. But Again, um, you know that's just one variable. So if you're if you're not getting a good result, you can try you know changing the lighting on the device itself. You can also try locating to a different area in the room where you are. Like if you notice that maybe you're near a window, maybe you want to move away from that window or you know close the curtains you know or, or or shades if that's an option so just knowing that lighting is a variable and that you can um you know think of all the things you can adjust can i move to a better or a different location can i adjust the the control of the device itself um one last trick i mean paul mentioned uh the, the stand on the eBot, well, uh, the Blaze also has an optional stand we'll talk a little bit more about. But another thing, you know, along with lighting, um, you know, with which you know, your, the type of material you're scanning might, um, if it's glossy paper, it might throw a little more glare. So that's a, another variable. Contrast can make a difference and a little trip, a trick that, um, I picked up, um, I believe this was from Judy Dix Dixon, for those of you who know her. Um, she would, would taught me to carry like a, a piece of material, like a, you know, it could be like a, a napkin from a restaurant or something like that that's maybe beige, you know, something that's going to be non-reflective. And when you lay your document down, you know, on top of, of that, you're going to make sure that you get, you know, good contrast because, again, as a blind person, I don't always know, am I putting my, you know, my white piece of paper down on a white table so that the camera, you know, may not get the best sort of contrast to help define the document area. But, you know, if I, if I take that kind of beige napkin, put that down, put the paper on top of that, then I know that there's going to be a very well-defined area for the for the document and that's going to help the OCR device get a a better um, better result. So there, sorry, that was uh, four cents worth, not two cents worth. <laughs> so Damien, have you seen the OCR enclosure? I think it was I think it was one of the guys from NFB had it at one of the conferences, but it's essentially um, it's almost like a cardboard box with a cutout on top where you can put your phone or your blade um, and it's actually a it's almost a, an, it's got three sides on it, so it's almost completely enclosed over an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and it has lights built in. So when you talk about going from places to place, um, and you don't necessarily know what your light is, I was really impressed with that idea. I don't know who thought it up, but that idea of, of having this um, completely collapsible stand, and it's cardboard, so it's lightweight, but it's got the built-in light. Um, so in that, in that aspect, if you had one of those stands, you would be completely in control of the lighting that you have no matter where you go. Yeah, that's a good point. And, uh, you know, again, but there your, your, your stand has the lights built in. So in that case, you would probably, like, say, if you were using the Blaze, I think I would 
want to turn the make sure that the flash was turned off so that I'm not getting too much light um, on you know for my result. So again, just be aware of you know if you're able to control your environment like with that stand. I mean, another thing you could do is you know do your uh, your set up your little document and scan inside a box where you're kind of know that you're protected from light and then make sure that you uh, are turning your flash on. So yeah, little little things like that where you basically have as much um, control over the you know the scanning environment as you can. And then Damian's going to talk in a little bit about the uh, stand specifically for the blades and the remote shutter button, which is another great way to make sure that you're getting a good scan because you're not moving your device over your material. So, so Damian, if you want to actually on that topic, um, speak a little bit about our Blaze ET, um, some of the buttons on there and, and the uh, options for controlling the playback. Sure. So the we have uh, two models of, of Blaze. So I'll start with the Blaze ET. Uh, now these uh, the Blaze line. They're portable, handheld digital book player and recorder. So these are our devices um, that are going to, you know, be something you can carry in your pocket. They have plenty of built-in onboard memory. You have 12 gigabytes of memory um, built in. You can um, put in a, up to a 64 gigabyte flash card. So you've got, you know, tons of, of storage for your, your books and media files and things like this. Um, you, you know, of course, can access books directly, uh, da download them directly from your NLS BARD, your Bookshare. Um, the device has internet, radio, podcast. So, you know, if you're if you're not familiar with it, you should definitely check it out. Um, you know, if you haven't checked out the Blaze lately, um, our recent update, I think it was uh, June 30th or beginning of July, you know, had some great improvements. So check that out. But the, you know, besides, you know, all those, uh, you know, soup to nuts features, um, the real nice thing about the Blaze is that, A, you have tactile buttons that are easy to locate and distinguish. They're different shapes. If you have some usable vision, there's different uh, color codings to make them easy to identify. And, um, you know, the real kind of whiz-bang thing is that you have a camera and built-in OCR. So not only is it something where you're able to have all your books and podcasts and radio and, and audio listening with you, you're also able to access documents. So if I go into a meeting and somebody hands me, um, you know, an agenda, uh, you know, in print and didn't have time or didn't think to put it on a, a USB drive or something like that, I can snap an image of that and a couple seconds later be listening to that document or even w which we'll get to later. Um, if I have a HIMSS Braille device, I could be reading that hard copy print document that someone just handed me in Braille. So um, that's kind of a you know, a, a nutshell of the 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 Blaze product. Here you have a, an OCR button, so one touch, you know, you, it says take a picture, you line up your shot, you uh, press that OCR button again, and it automatically processes it and begins reading it back to you. There's some navigation buttons in the, you know, the front surface, up, down, left, right, with a round concert, um, confirm button in the middle. So that helps you navigate menus and so forth and then just press the round confirm button to enter your choice. When you're actually reading back a document that you've just scanned, it, it's pretty intuitive. The round button is your play pause and then your up and down arrows are going to set your navigation level. So if you want to move by paragraph or sentence or word or character, you know, to go back and check the spelling of a word or quickly jump to the beginning or end of, uh, of a document, 
um, you, you set that level with the up and down arrows, and then your right and left arrows will move you by that element. So it's, uh, again, pretty, pretty handy, pretty powerful, and very easy to use. Okay, um, and then you want to talk quickly about the um, preview area and the voice guidance and how that works? Sure. So, um, again, um, we do have a, a stand, and um, you know, not to get too infomercial on you, but there is a promotion going on right now where the OCR Blaze stand is included with the purchase. So that's uh, normally uh, an accessory that you would pay for, but it, it's included with the, your Blaze purchase uh, for at least through the end of this month. And so the stand, um, you know, it's, it's something that's easy to assemble. Um, and, you know, what it does is you place the blaze on that stand, and then you know that when you line up your, your paper underneath that your, you know, your shot is going to be optimally located. So you're at the right height, you know, everything is, is good. So, you know, that's great, you know, to, to teach yourself how to use the blaze, um, especially if you're doing batch scanning, which is where it's, it's not just a single page that you maybe just want to identify what is this, you know, sorting through your mail, but it's maybe a long article, 20 pages, or, or you're scanning a book, something that you're, you know, you want to keep, you want to maybe scan now and then read later when you're commuting somewhere, a, a stand is, you know, is much better because you don't have to keep finding the, you know, the optimal way to line up your shot. Now, the blaze, it, it's, you don't need to use that stand. And in fact, you know, once you kind of have an idea that, um, you know, holding the, your, your blaze 12 to 16 inches above the paper, sort of, you know, in the, in the center, that you're going to get your best result if you um, have your paper in landscape orientation. Um, I find you get really good good results, um, you know, without the stand. So for just one or two pieces of paper, if I'm out and about, that works pretty well. So the the kind of trick we give is put the paper in between your elbows, hold the blaze up, um, kind of centered maybe about nose height, and try, you know, doing your, your shot like that. That works pretty well. But we've kind of taken it another step further in this recent Blaze update that I talked about in early July. We added a kind of a, a preview area. So if you turn that on in your options in the OCR settings, what that does is it gives you voice prompts and kind of tells you, like, you know, no document detected. Okay, and then you put the document underneath, and then it starts to give you directions to, you know, raise your blaze, move it a little higher, maybe move it slightly to the right. So it's kind of giving you instructions to tell you where your, your shot will be best lined up. So, again, if you don't have a stand, you haven't done it before, then you might find that, that preview uh, feature really helpful because it does kind of instruct you how to line up the shot. Again, once you're more familiar with, with doing it, um, I find that I do shut off those instructions and just it, it's fast enough that it's easier for me to just do trial and error. I mean, a lot of times I just want to know what something is and, you know, maybe I'm sorting my mail. But then, like, once I do know, okay, this is something I want to keep and save, um, you know, I just maybe take a shot. If I don't like the result, I just uh, make adjustments, do it again, and, you know, this time it's it's golden. Right. Well, a quick note from a sighted person, too. When these first came out, um, I remember all of us sighted folks were trying to um, get a scan from the blaze, um, and you touched on this, Damian. You said put the paper between your elbows, but you glossed over, um, put your elbows on the table. Uh, uh, yeah. That was one thing I saw the blind, the folks who are blind kind of do that intuitively. No one had to tell them to do that, but all of us who were sighted in the room trying to figure out how to do this, it, it took a while, and we had to kind of observe our blind uh, 
uh, colleagues doing it their way. But if you put your elbows on the table, you're going to be about the right height, your paper is going to be about in the right spot, and I mean, unless you've got really horrible lighting, you're going to get a pretty good scan. Um, but it's one of those things where I think a lot of times sighted folks don't, we almost take it for granted, and you guys just do it without thinking. So. Well, also our parents, you know, always told us, you know, don't put your elbows on the table. Yeah. So maybe it's a little, uh, you know, counterintuitive or yeah. going against the grain. Yeah. And do you want um, to talk quickly about the Blaze EZ on how that's a little different? Yeah. So, so real quick, the Blaze EZ, it's called EZ because it's, you know, easier. Um, so the idea here is that you have the same navigation structure, your up, down, left, right, confirm. Um, you also have a dedicated OCR button on the Blaze ET if the device is, if the keypad is facing you with the power button at the top. The, on the ET, your OCR button is top right, and on the EZ, your OCR button is bottom right. So they're slightly different. The EZ has fewer buttons. It does not have a, a telephone style keypad. So this is, you know, maybe more for somebody who's not as comfortable with technology or gets a little overwhelmed. I mean, it, it just has a, a simplified button layout. So for example, um, you know, if you want to just put, if you just want to listen to audio books, you press the book button and that's going to pull up to a, a list of all the books that you have loaded on there. If you want to listen to radio, you hit the radio button. If you want to do OCR, you hit the OCR button. So, you know, for some people, it's, uh, you know, it, it it does, you know, most of the stuff that the ET does, it's just uh, a little easier, a little more approachable. So that's the, uh, you know, kind of the idea of the, of the EZ. There's a small price difference between the two, so. And I've got a photo and a slide up right now that's showing the OCR stand and the remote. If you want to come back to that for a minute. Mm -hmm. So this stand is, um, again, it's easy to put together, take apart. There's two kind of good size thumb screws that, uh, you know, fasten it all together and, you know, again, you just undo those two screws and it breaks into three metal pieces. So it's actually, you know, pretty easy to, if you do want to transport it, carry it with you. Um, it's not a problem to do that. Um, it, it comes with a remote that um, plugs into the, the back of the, the blaze either the EZ or the, the ET. And what's nice here is if, again, this is more so not just like doing a one or two page job, but if you're doing a long article or a book or, you know, something like that where it's batch scanning and you're creating a large multi-page file, um, the stand with the remote can be really nice because um, you, you can, um, you know, not have to keep reaching up and finding that OCR button. You can just put your document under the stand and hit a little button on the remote and then, you know, turn the page, hit the button on the remote like that. And so one, one final thing about the batch scanning, here you also have choices. You can set it up in your options menu to what they call remote, which means it'll take the picture every time you click the button, or you can set it up that, you know, it'll take a shot every, you know, five seconds, six seconds, seven, eight, nine seconds. I mean, you, you set the interval that it takes the picture. So if you figure you can, you know, flip a page, you know, every couple of seconds, you maybe uh, go with that, that uh, you know, automatic feature, but a lot of people just like to, you know, set it on remote and then use the remote control to hit that button every time they're ready. So it's uh, it's really, you know, again, evolved quite a bit. And I'll just throw this little plug in there. All HIMSS products, um, we, we do update them, you know, usually at least once or, you know, once or twice a year. And, you know, once you've made the initial investment, we don't charge you for those updates. So the thought is, is that all these products are going to continue to improve and 
add new features and things like that. And so this, uh, this batch scanning and field of view report uh, or, uh, you know, preview where it gives you directions to help you line up the shot, those were improvements that weren't there when it was first introduced, but it, they're just great examples of how we've taken user feedback and improved the products. So um, just wanted to toss that in there. Any other thing about the stand that I'm leaving out? No, that's it for the stand. Um, and I've got a photo up right now of the Blaze ET and the Smart Beetle Braille display. Do you want to talk um, real fast about how to pair those two and what yeah. it means? Well, yeah. So this this is um, a very powerful thing because, again, let's say I'm in a meeting and you hand me that last-minute agenda and I do the OCR. Well. You know, maybe I uh, don't want to put my headphones in to listen to that, um, you know, because I want to hear what's going on around me, and, and but I also don't want to, you know, disturb the other people with my, my uh, Blaze talking. So here's, you know, a great place where having the information in Braille is great, and the Blaze ET um, has a built-in Bluetooth, so we're able to pair with our HIMSS Braille display, so the Smart Beetle, uh, Ultra Portable 14 cell, any of our U2 models, or even the, the Braille Edge um, 40 cell model. Um, so, you know, you can kind of do, if you're used to pairing devices via Bluetooth, you know that you would go through the menu and you'd find Bluetooth and it'll search for devices and you can, you know, pick one from the list and you know, that's maybe a great way to do it if you're at a, you know, a, a place where there's a bunch of different types of devices, like a conference or something, that's the way you would want to do it. But, you know, there are situations where, you know, kind of a quick and easy way to do it, and especially for any deafblind users who, you know, might have a, you know, harder time if they're actually having to listen, you know, to the menu to, to find, you know, where the appropriate point is. So we've built in an auto connect feature. So the only caveat here is that you have to make sure that you only have one um, device available. You make sure that it is in pairing mode with, you know, with Bluetooth activated. So once the Braille display is ready and waiting, you, all you have to do is make sure your Blaze is turned on, and this only works with the ET, unfortunately. So here you have to have the, the telephone-style keypad. But you press and hold the zero key for a couple of seconds. You'll hear a chime, and you're basically auto-connected to the, the Braille device. So it's a you know, very handy feature. One thing I've heard from teachers, and you mentioned, when you're when you're paired with a Braille display, it's not speaking out loud, so you're not disturbing people around you. Um, but one of the things that people sometimes overlook too are the social aspect of having all these devices that talk out loud. Um, so if you're in a restaurant or you're in a college classroom, um, part of the nice thing here is that you're just not drawing attention to yourself. You can sit in the classroom um, and just be a student, just like everybody else. You're not you're not drawing attention to yourself and, and drawing attention to the fact that you're doing things differently. Yeah, and, and with the Blaze, you know, even when you are taking a picture with your, you know, of a document, say you're in a restaurant or something, I mean, it basically looks like a cell phone. And, you know, people are always taking little pictures of their cell phones and taking pictures of their food and whatever. So you're still not going to, you know, stand out or look unusual, um, you know, using the Blaze. In public. Right. Great okay. point. Great. Thank you, Damon. If anyone has any questions, um, type them in the window and we'll cover them when we get to the Q&A section. Um, Paul, are you there? Do you want to take over and talk a little bit about um, the OCR with the eBot? Sure. Um, like I mentioned in the very beginning, our, our eBot uh, there in the picture is a, a fully transportable uh, unit. Uh, it's only between six and eight pounds, and we have three different models, our basic, our advanced, and our pro. Uh, I'll just focus on the pro right now. Uh, it is our fully automatic motorized camera. Uh, all these devices connect wirelessly to an iPad, and we have a built-in wireless. 
And uh, so you can connect by a laptop, by any type of smart tablet, or you can connect a uh, monitor to it via HDMI. Um, on the, uh, using a, a smart tablet, uh, you have touch screen gesture control, so you can slide from the left and, and actually get into a lot of settings, and that's where you choose a screenshot or full page OCR. And then when you slide from the right to the left, uh, you get into the OCR options that allow you to, to go for full page OCR or the back scan OCR. Uh, so it's very intuitive. It's very, very easy to use. It's very friendly. Uh, works great in the classroom or in the work environment. Um, it, it's a small footprint, doesn't take up a lot of room, and uh, a lot of kids find it um, a, a preference because of the uh, iPad or smart tablet they can hold in their uh, on their desk. You can actually put the eBot anywhere in the classroom or, or in a work environment. Um, there is a SD card in the eBot Pro that you're able to save your document images and uh, text-to-speech those later. Uh, so it's something you can actually uh, take advantage of and, and capture those and, and re-listen to them later. Uh, it also has a built-in earplug, so if you don't want to disturb anybody around you, you can actually just plug in your earbuds and uh, listen to it to yourself. Um, there's one other device that we have here, and I don't think we have a slide for it. It's, it's our GoVision 24-inch uh, transportable unit. Uh, it also has a, a built-in OCR. Uh, this device uh, is for people with low vision, obviously. It has the ability to do self-mode, near-mode, and distant viewing. And um, uh, it has a OCR capability. It's not quite full page yet. Uh, but if you turn the page to a landscape or turn your page 90 degrees, you can almost capture about 90% of what's on the page. Uh, but I did want to mention the GoVision because it's an additional uh, unit that does OCR that we have. Yeah, we should have included a slide on that. But definitely go to the website if you want more information yeah, about any of these products. Um, and you touched too, Paula, about the fact that you students like that they can hold the iPad um, and a lot of the benefit and I've seen this from our, our low vision employees even um, part of the benefit there is that you can pull that iPad within inches of your eyes which is what a lot of these guys want to do when they're using the devices and it's a lot more convenient to pull the iPad two inches away from your face and it is to hover over your desk and put your face two inches from a monitor monitor right. part of it is just that, that comfortability of doing it and then again I've heard from teachers some of the teachers don't don't care about the cool factor, but then there are other teachers where they're like, where they have problems with students who don't want to use devices because, especially something like this that's big and it's on the desktop and it's visible. Um, so a lot of the students will sort of not use the devices that the school or their parents have given them, and because this is essentially an iPad accessory, it's cooler, and so they get a little less resistance from some of those students because it is an iPad accessory. It's not just something weird and funky on the desktop. Right. And the eBot doesn't have to go on their desk. It can go anywhere in the room, actually. Right. Yeah. Right. right. But that's, I mean, that's a big part of the, the high school experience. And, and I've heard people with stories as well about, um, even with the video magnifier, where the kids in the, the class get the video magnifiers and then the teachers are a little frustrated because the students are looking at each other's hair and, and all around the room. And But then you, it, it kind of depends on what school of thought you're from because other teachers say, well, that's great. That's part of the high school experience. They should be doing that. Um, so really, it probably depends on what class you're taking, what grade level you're in, and, and how, how appropriate all of that is. But I like that um, some of these products address the social needs, specifically of high school and college students, because it's so important at that age. So right. we are going to... We are going to open it up for questions and answers. Um, if you want, you can unmute yourself and ask a question out loud. Just introduce yourself by first name. Let us know who you are and ask your question using your mic. Or you can type into the window and I will read anything aloud that I see come through there. So we'll just we'll hang out for a minute uh, and see what comes through. So, Paul and Damian, thank you so much for being our presenters today. Damian, do you have any cool stories now that you've had your, your blades um, out and about with you and you travel quite a bit? Do you have any 
kind of cool uses where we've used it or just times where it's been a sort of a, a blessing to have? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if I didn't mention it on this call, but, you know, there have been a few times where my JAWS, you know, my laptop, um, you know, JAWS stopped talking or my laptop got muted and um, or or like say when an update was, you know, in, in progress and I just wasn't sure what was going on, all I knew is my computer wasn't talking and I was able to take that blaze out and just take a shot of the uh, computer screen and be able to read the, the message, you know, that was on there so I knew what was going on. I mean, it's just really nice to have um, you know, a portable, you know, thing like that, that, you know, if I don't have a, you know, a, as my colleague, our, our our colleague Dave Wilkinson will say, if you don't have a sight wing available, you know, it can be really nice to have a, have your blaze in your pocket. Yeah, and I know. Can you hear me? Oh, I can. Is that constant? Is it constant? Yes. Hi. Um, I was wondering, what is the um, largest print that the, that the products will, uh, Except, I mean, what is the largest that it shows? How many power? Oh, for the for the eBot, um, because that's a low vision and it does put out print. The other products that we talked about just about audio. Do you want to talk about I, the maximum magnification with eBot? I I can answer those questions. Uh, on the Go Vision, the 24 inch transportable unit, right? It goes it goes to 68x. Wow, all right. And what about the um the other one? The uh eBot Pro, it depends on which device you're using as a monitor. So if you're using a tablet, it goes to sixteen X. Um a thirteen inch laptop goes to twenty four X, a twenty four inch monitor goes to forty three X. And what about can I use these are these strictly PC or can I use my um fifteen inch um MacBook Pro? Uh, absolutely, you can use your MacBook Pro. What I tell people nope. with the eBot is that it's going to connect to almost everything you Every already own with a screen. So you can connect right. to your television if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm sorry, you can connect what? It, 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 it will connect to almost any device out there. So we can connect okay, to so Sure. Um, so should I expect about 16X with uh, the 15-inch Pro? Uh, I would actually say more than that. I would say 26, 27. Okay, that's great. Thanks a lot. Sure. If it's one of the new pros that has the retina screen, the, the quality of the image on that screen is going to help quite a bit as well. Yeah, on the iPad Pro? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and the MacBook Pro, right. Yeah, they have, the one I have has the retina. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Um, even even just a regular resolution without ma magnifying, it makes a huge difference in the clarity of the image. Oh, all right. Well, thank you, Constance. Thank you. Um, we have a question from the chat window. Um, can you read a fast food menu with the Blaze? Demian, do you want to take so, that one? So, um, I mean, yes, you can. Now, exactly. Uh -oh what kind of a result you're going to get may vary. Um, so, you know, menus have, you know, again, it, it's, we don't know what font it's going to like be. I may have lost my audio. Um, hello, hello, hello. No, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, so may, maybe we're having a, we're losing our, our webinar uh, guru here, but, um, you know, the, at, at this point, though, um, the 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 blaze is basically going to read, you know, down one column and then down the next. So um, we we haven't yet introduced a you know kind of a, a chart mode where you're telling it that you want to read across. So you're going to get you know some useful information, um, you know, from a, a fast food menu, but, you know, you may not be lining up, you know, the description of the, the Big Mac with the, you know, the actual price. I mean, so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of one of those areas where you're going to get some information, but, you know, it's not your optimal um, 
you know, your optimal scan and read experience. Well, if you ask at the fast food places, um, it's going to be hit or miss, but some of them do have printed menus behind the counter specifically for people um, with disabilities, especially for people who can't speak, so they can kind of point and choose. Um, so if that's the case, um, ask if they've got a printed menu, and then, of course, you can use your blaze to get the information from there. Another question from chat, can you save an OCR scan to the GoVision? So, Paul, that sounds like it's right up your alley. Yeah. Um, uh, on the eBot, like I said, we have an SD card, but on the GoVision, you actually have a USB port on the back side of the uh, GoVision that allows you to put a thumb drive in there and save your documents to that. Right. You know, and one thing I just learned actually recently, um, I know with the with the schools, you're you're required to provide accessible formats of uh, textbooks. But what I found out at the college level, sometimes it can take um, a week or two or four to get that accessible book from the textbook publisher. Um, so another thing to point out too, when you have these um, OCR products, even for for people with learning disabilities. Um, when you have that OCR product, especially the the eBot, um, you're getting a few a few benefits from that that are not just for the low vision market. Um, with the eMod, that text that it's OCRing is going to come back up on the screen and it's going to highlight word for word or go down the sentence on the screen. So someone who's got dyslexia or a learning impairment, they're hearing that read out loud, they're seeing it on the screen. And then in the case of waiting for the publisher to get you an accessible textbook, you're not waiting four weeks before you can get an accessible, before you get access to your textbook. So something like the eBot for the college level would be great for people with multiple disabilities or even with one disability if the college wanted to have it and use it for multiple students with different needs. So, um, and then I'm waiting to see if there are any other questions coming through. Again, unmute yourself or start typing in the chat window. Um, let's give it a few more minutes and see what comes through. But this has been good information and you guys have asked great questions. Hi. Uh, I'll just take a second here and just go back to the GoVision and, and uh, uh, say that one important uh, item that the GoVision has is the ability to turn on and off the lamps um, on the camera itself. Uh, the eBot does it too with a button, but the GoVision has that feature as well. And um, when we are looking at uh, doing OCR on the glossy page, it's very important to turn that light off or to tilt the camera a little bit. Uh, so it's not looking directly down at a glossy page, just go about 10 degrees up or down uh, to do a, a capture and it works much better. And you just reminded me too with the GoVision, someone asked us if we could OCR something on the wall and that kind of goes back to the fast food menu idea. Um, and we didn't think it would work. The GoVision is intended to OCR from a page on the desktop. It's not intended for OCR at a distance. But we said, hey, let's see what happens. And so they pointed it at the wall and it did OCR. Um, the the quality of the text you're going to get back is going to depend on a lot of factors, namely your distance from that material um, and, and how close you are to it. Um, but the, the main thing is with the GoVision, it is a, it is, we're calling it a transportable product. It's, it's not as small as the eBot, but it, it definitely is something you can take from location to location. Um, but because it's larger than the eBot, it's much larger than the Blaze e EZ and ET, it has a larger camera and it has that HD monitor. It's got an HD camera in there. So um, if you're going to try to OCR something at a distance, that would be my favorite product. Um, but again, it's not really intended for that, but we found that it, it does work if you're in a pinch. Absolutely. Um, and we and have a lot of new, new products coming. And uh, as Damien said, I just want to just reiterate it because I think it's so important is that all our firmware upgrades are at no cost to our uh, customers and that uh, we are continuing to uh, continuing to improve the product. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if the Blaze ET um, what can do full pages or if it has to be set at a certain um, setting to be able to do that. No, it does. It does full page. So um, you know the best result um, I find if you put the page in landscape mode, 
So right. you, you know, um, yeah, you'll you'll get a full page. Is there any possibility um, that in future we could have a Blaze ET um, with a small display at the bottom, a small Braille display at the bottom? You know, I don't know. I mean, that's a and that would be an entirely new product because you're talking hardware. But you know, right now we're kind of going down the path of you know our you know our our Blaze working in conjunction with our Braille products, and we'll kind of right. see how that goes. But it's yeah, that's no problem because you know right, yeah. that's no problem because I'm used to pairing stuff. Right. But you know, we we definitely keep tabs of uh, you know requests and new ideas, so we'll pass that one on to our development team and you know keep it uh, I, as a future I consideration. Guess, I guess the reason I ask that is because there are some co you know companies that in the next couple of years are going to be producing cheaper displays, and um, you know new materials are coming out for displays. So I'm thinking maybe your company wouldn't have to spend as much. Researching and developing. Right. I think to put a braille display on the current um, iteration of the Blaze ET wouldn't be as helpful. It's it's it, it be, just based on the size. I think. Um, right. You'd sure. You'd only get probably six or eight braille cells at a time. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't be right. right. But but I appreciate this info. Yeah. Well, and we send all these comments to our development team, and like I said, that's where most of our new improvements and uh, new features come from. Whoa, a lot of feedback on that one. Okay, so I have another question in the chat window here. Um, well, it's a comment more. April says, I have a Blaze ET, and I hope someday I can navigate it by Braille displays. So, so, Damien, the so pairing, we are we are basic? doing that now, um, you know, with with the Hims Braille products. So just make sure that you've updated your Blaze to the latest firmware, and if you have a a Hims Braille product, you will be able to to do that. Um, right now, it, you get Braille output, and you're able to navigate the menus from your Braille display. The next thing that we're working on implementing is being able to input text from your Braille display. So um, it's definitely something that is happening now, and you're going to see more of that going forward. Right. So April, if you do have a HIM Braille display, uh, give us a call at 888-520-4467, and our tech support guys can walk you right through how to pair that and how to navigate your Braille from your uh, Braille display. Um, um, are you able to pair the, um, can you pair the Blaze ET with either the Mini Seika or the Braille Pen? It's only HIMS Braille displays at this time. We, we may um, do that, you know, work with other Braille displays down the road, but, you know, we, we, this is something where we control our own destiny. We have access to our own developers, and we don't need to get permission or cooperation from any of the other companies. So it, it's not that we have decided not to. It's just right, that we're sure. starting with, yeah. with, with him. Dan, yeah, thank you. Another great question. And April says, yeah, she has a different brand of Braille display. So maybe in the future, like Damien said, it was just easier and faster to make it work with our displays. Um, and obviously, it takes a little bit more work to, to work with, with different companies. All right. Well, guys, I'm glad that you were able to join us for our webinar today. Definitely check us out online for our future topics. Um, next month, we are going to be covering some all-in-one products, so uh, products like the eBot, where you've got your OCR and your low vision combined into one. So we're going to cover a couple of different products um, and, and some of the ways that schools can save money or save time by um, maximizing the, the use of those types of products. So that's for next month, and then we'll have new topics hitting the website pretty soon after that. Definitely join us for those. If you have ideas for new webinars, send us an email at webinars at hymns-inc.com. Uh, you would save us the headache of coming up with new topics all the time. <laughs> then, of course, we'd just love to hear from you guys, too, because it, it, it's um, 
from our perspective, we try to predict what people are interested in, but it's a whole lot easier if you just let us know what you're interested in and we'll try to cover it. Uh, if you have questions about a, getting a new HIMSS product, send an email to sales at hymns-inc.com. If you want support on a product you already own, of course, it's support at hymns-inc.com. Or if you just want to call us up and shoot the breeze or talk to us on the phone, give us a call, 888-520-4467. So, Damien, uh, do you have any parting words before we close it out? Uh, no, but thank you very much, everybody, for your time, and look forward to uh, chatting again on a future webinar. Thanks, Damien. And Paul? Help, I'd say thank you, too. Thank you for your time. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone, for joining us, and have a great rest of your week. Kim's. 